Hello, my name is Ian Livingstone. I'm the Life President of IDOS and I'm also the co-author of Fighting Fantasy Game Books uh, with Steve, along with Steve Jackson. And what I'm doing here today is uh, been judging the Make Something Unreal competition. Um, been teams of student teams have gathered here over a period of months but here live at the Gadget Show creating a game using the Unreal development kit to make a game for iPod, for iPad and for iPhone using uh, four of our Fighting Fantasy game books. And it's been extraordinary how they've come together as a team. Students who've not ever worked together before, never even made a game before, have produced something fantastically wonderful. You know, very compelling gameplay, very, very difficult competition to judge because each game had its own merits. But what we were looking for as IP owners was a game that remained faithful to the basic essence of Fighting Fantasy, that reflected the gameplay of Fighting Fantasy and that kind of captured everything about a Fighting Fantasy adventure, branching narrative, choice and consequence, um, the fact that when you go through an adventure you never know what's going to happen next, killing monsters, finding treasure, ultimately winning. And I can honestly say that each team have done that faithfully. So the books that were considered were Warlock of Firetop Mountain, Citadel of Chaos, Armies of Death, and Death Trap Dungeon. And it was absolute nightmare for Steve and I to judge which one would be ultimately be the winner. But all things considered, this is a developing, this was a judgment that we made really midway through development. So we made a judgment today, which might not ultimately be the final choice, but today on the facts we were given, we made our, our choice. But ultimately, all these teams are winners. They've all done brilliantly well. They will all be published, I hope, by using our IP, uh, ultimately on the iStore. But after lots of talk, discussion, heated arguments, blocked away in a room, we decided that Commando Kiwi, with our interpretation of Warlock of Firetop Warlock of Firetop Mountain, was the winner today. I'm delighted to be part of this, this Trade to Game initiative. Uh, I've been in the games industry since 1975 when Steve Jackson and I started Games Workshop. We wrote our first Fire Advance game book in 1982, The Warlock of Fight Time Mountain. And here we are, 30 years later, judging a competition in the world of, of digital entertainment where people have taken hold of our IP from a book and transformed it into a very playable iPhone and iPad game. And that's great to see young talent coming through because I would say that the UK is one of the most creative nations, if not the most creative nation in the world. Look at our fashion, our film, our music, our design, and of course our games. And it's important that we support the young talent coming through. Um, initiatives like Train to Game is fantastic to get people who would might not otherwise known as a worthwhile career in games, recognizing it as a worthwhile career, and being empowered and skilled to be able to make a contribution with real skills, whether it's programming, art and animation. There's a fantastic opportunity in the world today. The games industry alone in software sales is worth $50 billion a year. That's going to rise to $90 billion by 2015. You know, it's the largest entertainment industry in the world. It's bigger than books, bigger than music, bigger than box office. What we have to let people know, children, as well as their teachers and their parents, that this is a fantastic career opportunity. And quite recently, I've been also involved with trying to change the ICT curriculum in schools. We work very closely with governments. I wrote a, or co-wrote a report called Next Gen, which recommended to, uh, to government that ICT should be an essential discipline on the, on the, on the school's national curriculum to replace ICT as currently taught, which is largely learning about office skills. It's not about computer code. So it's uh, so important in the world of, of, of code that people understand what code is. We teach our children at schools to use applications but know how to make them. We effectively teach them how to read and not to write. You know, with manufacturing in decline and financial services in disarray, digital coding is going to be manufacturing of the future. And to see the kids today and the students today being able to create digital content through understanding the language of code is empowering, not just for them, but for the whole digital economy. So this initiative is just one moment in time that reflects that, and I hope it continues.